Welcome to Northlandia, a place to bring your curiosity because here you'll find curiosities. I'm White Buckner of the Duluth News Tribune, and I'll be your guide as we discover the unique and fascinating stories here in the Northland. Here we celebrate the region's distinctive people, places, and history. In this episode, we hear ghost stories of an allegedly haunted restaurant in two harbors. Let's venture forth into Northlandia. To take us into the Blackwoods Bar and Grill in Two Harbors and tell us of the supposed ghost that haunts it, I'm joined again by News Tribune reporter Joe Bowen. Joe, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Wyatt. So, Joe, talking about how did the story come about and what interested you about it to, to pursue it? So what interested me initially about the story is that, the professional, I should say, is that there are there's a bunch of stories about the Blackwoods Restaurant in Two Harbors being haunted. That's definitive. Like the, that, It's definitive that the stories exist. Whether or not they're true is a whole other can of worms. That's that's maybe a, even like a generous way of putting it, because you know if they were true, then that's definitive proof of an afterlife. And that's it's then then you know what are we even doing recording a podcast? We have much bigger fish to fry at that point. So those uh, that's for sure like the case there. And so that's what interests me professionally is reporting on kind of the reputation this restaurant has for being haunted, and it's definitive. It does have that reputation. Uh, I think it was CBS News did a little uh, blurb about it maybe ten years ago about being you know a haunted one of many haunted places in minnesota there's a whole bunch of websites called like you know uh, like ghost hunter sort of websites that list it um among like you know here are haunted places in minnesota here are haunted restaurants in uh the united states here are haunted places in northern minnesota generally that sort of thing and so i think it's definitive that it at least has that reputation uh, and so professionally, that's kind of the, the, the tack that uh, I that we tried to take is it is, I would say, objectively the case that people believe that people believe that it is haunted there or at least think it is. And it's a fun thing to talk about. Personally, I am deeply skeptical of these sorts of things. But as someone who at least tries to be good at his job, I think it's important to give the people who believe it at least the benefit of the doubt enough to hear them out and be like, well, tell us what you're saying here. Tell us what you've been telling other people and then go from there. Mm-hmm. And I'd say I feel very similarly. So it was, pr- it was, it was interesting for us both to go up, go, mm-hmm. then go up there together. Sure. Agreed. And you and I, we drove up there uh, together and we got the chance to speak with a couple uh, employees there who have stories of themselves and have heard some stories that they shared with us. First off, just talk to me about, give me the background of these haunted stories at the restaurant. Like, Where do these come from? Like, what's going on here? Well, I mean, what's going on here is it's kind of its own can of worms, like metaphysically. But what's for sure going on here is that there's uh, several employees and current and former employees of the Blackwoods Bar and Grill in Two Harbors who believe and, you know, have a lot of anecdotal evidence and even a little bit of video that, to back up their claims, that there's essentially the ghost of a little girl who haunts that restaurant. So uh, as far as they're concerned, they call her Sarah, but that's just kind of the name they've given her. Like they're not confident that's her real name, so to speak. But uh, at least to hear them say it, Sarah's responsible for a lot of um, mischief at the restaurant. So like uh, nobody's in this or that room, but suddenly a bunch of plates go flying on the ground and they're broken, right? Uh, Nobody's over there, but suddenly the lights are flickering. No one's near the switch. No one's touching this bar menu, this menu that's on the bar. And it goes flying across the room, that sort of stuff. It's mostly stories. Um, some people say, you know, they've got firsthand accounts. Uh, they did show us one video of that menu kind of getting flung off the bar and that sort of thing. And that's so that's essentially the definitively what's happening is there are people at Blackwoods who think that the restaurant is haunted. We've actually never seen her. We call her Sarah. Um, I don't believe that's her original name, but that's what she's been named for many years. She does a lot of oddball things here in the restaurant. We don't ever physically see her, though. That was Nicole Beveridge, a, a longtime server and bartender with the Blackwoods Company. With a perfect name to yes, be working very at a restaurant. Perfect. Beveridge. Yep. She's been at that particular restaurant for six and a half years now, right about. And she was one of the she was the first person we spoke with uh, when yes. we went up there to visit the restaurant. Mm-hmm. And while we were talking with her, as I introduced this next soundbite, I may or may not have heard something a little little weird going on in the background. Mm-hmm. She was well known by a lot of, my staff stays with this restaurant a long time, so my, my elders per se had already been here for about 10 years or so. Or you know, some of them since our restaurant has opened in 94. And they were already telling me stories about Sarah. All right, so if you weren't listening to that with headphones, I'd recommend giving them one more listen with, with headphones. There's just a couple weird sounds in there, particularly in the middle. There's a very more obvious <laughs> sound. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. I think you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> <laughs> 
But like when like while we were doing the interview, uh, even at that time when I was listening to it, I was because I listened to the audio as we're recording and watching the video and such, making sure it's all looking and sounding good. And I heard that sound, and I was my eyes eyebrows just raised, like what the heck was that? Mm-hmm. Like and that's not me being like like I'm just looking for an excuse mm-hmm. of like that just genuinely seemed weird to me. And mm-hmm. I listened to interviews all the time, and I just didn't see any facial re- neck throat. Knows and anything I could possibly think of, mm-hmm. I just don't know what that was. Mm-hmm. I mean, what was I sent that off to you. I was like, am, am I crazy for thinking that that was weird? <laughs> and I very politely explained that yes, you were, Wyatt. Uh, this is your last day at the Duluth News Tribune. We're sending you to a farm where you'll have plenty of space to run. Well, that was a good year. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, so one of the things that I kind of like about that is a, it's just apropos because this is those sort of little noises and they're the kind of thing that I didn't, I didn't even notice the first time I listened to that recording that you sent me that mm-hmm. you know our listeners just heard too mm-hmm. they're the kind of thing that you kind of have to be primed for and they're the exact kind of thing that I think is really good fodder I guess for mm-hmm. ghost stories because we don't know what it is and but we just spent an hour talking about yeah. ghosts. And so, I mean, I think there's even a scene in The Sixth Sense where someone's listening to a record. One of the characters is listening to a recording and they go like, okay, if I isolate the audio and blah, 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 I can hear the ghost if I really mess with this recording. And so this is, I mean, it's apropos that this sort of thing happened here because it's, and one, I think it'll be uh, Nicole later on will say like, or maybe we Hannah story will say something like, you know, it's hard to disprove this sort of thing. And it, it is, I mean, like logically the, the onus is on people making these claims to say, here's evidence of the ghost. But either way, those little weird, inexplicable noises, there's plenty of real world explanations for it. You know, sometimes your nose is plugged and, you know, that happens to me sometimes. I have a cold or whatever and I just my I make a noise when I'm breathing. I don't even realize I've done it. Those sorts of things make total sense, but there's kind of a the part of me that wants to believe is like, that's the ghost. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I know when we uh and maybe we should talk about this later, but when you and I went uh upstairs uh in this restaurant, you know, the 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 stairs in there are where this little girl may or may not have broken her neck and died and sounds like didn't happen but either way and so we go up there and it's just this kind of creepy uh like it's like a hallway it's just restaurant storage it's there's like one fluorescent lamp and it's flickering it's some real resident evil sort of stuff going on up there like the vibe is i mean it's fine it's a second floor of a restaurant it used to be a boarding house you can tell it's old and like academically the part of my brain that took the acts and that i (laughs) flick on when i'm watching school board meetings and all that sort of stuff that part's like yeah it's just kind of dark up here and they have a bunch of stuff that they don't really use it's like christmas decorations and stuff up there Mm -hmm. that part is like oh yeah you know that's just kind of weird kind of whatever but then the lights flickered when we were up there like as we were walking up as i we were saying like oh well maybe we'll see sarah up here and the other part of my brain the the animal part that's like well what if it's all true you can't help but have that kind of get activated in those sorts of situations. And I think the mm-hmm. same is true with that sound bite where it's like you've got the pump primed. You're listening to people tell stories about a ghost for forever. Mm-hmm. And you know that's a thing that happens in ghost stories is, oh, wow, we actually found evidence. And all you have to do is listen really closely and put the pieces together. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, and and so I think that those sounds are like, I think it was great that it kind of happened because it's an excuse at least to talk about kind of the the ephemera that I think makes up a lot of ghost stories. Yeah, and I want to be clear, I'm in no way suggesting that I genuinely believe that this is like the, the ghost of Sarah speaking to us from across the grave. Don't it's back just, up now, Wyatt. No, no, no. I, I just, Backpedaling like a cheap <laughs> schwin. I don't, I'm not suggesting that it is, but it was weird enough that it just makes you wonder, if, if given the circumstances that we were, as you were saying, we were talking about ghost stories and such, can't help but make you wonder what if, you know? I can't rationalize personally what that sound was because i've listened to a lot of sounds and everything mm-hmm. it's not i'm not saying it's not possible that's one of those things that you suggest it's just not what i would think it would sound like based right. off of the rest of the interview i listened to but it just makes you wonder though it just kind of mm-hmm. makes you i too have not. listened to a lot of sounds <laughs> and um <laughs> yeah i mean and to be clear yeah like i'm not saying like, oh it probably is the ghost or anything like that no, no. it's just it's the kind of thing that i think it's the type of thing I think in which ghost stories thrive is what I'm trying to say here mm-hmm. is that I don't have a ready explanation for it. Like you watch the video of her speaking when that noise mm-hmm. happened and it wasn't like she scratched her nose. It wasn't nope. like, you know, her phone went off, nothing like that. You know, maybe it's a ringtone, whatever. And so we don't have a definitive answer for what it is. Mm-hmm. And it's that kind of gray area between, OK, we, it's probably not these things. That's, I think, where ghost stories thrive conspiracy theories too, all that sort of stuff is well we don't have a ready explanation so what could it be sort Mm -hmm. of a thing and like i don't i personally am not uh, i'm i personally am a deep skeptic of this sort of thing (laughs) but it's still like kind of fun to 
think about, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've had fun talking about it with you in general. Mm -hmm. Regardless, from our experience up there, this is probably this this audio clip is probably as close to a possible ghost sign that we mm -hmm. were going to get in this visit. Uh, then the lights flickering a little bit upstairs. We have confirmed the existence of an afterlife here at the oh, Duluth gosh. News Tribune. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> the second we're done with this podcast here, I'm going to start typing, uh, make some calls to, I don't know, the Vatican, <laughs> see if they can confirm. <laughs> so let's, let's move on from our brief, very mild experience mm -hmm. there, maybe. Harrowing. Um, let's talk about what specific experiences that the, some of these workers have had with mm -hmm. uh, the alleged ghost. Yes, Probably should have led with a lot of this in retrospect. So the uh, yeah, so some of the experiences they've had, it's a lot of uh, like like mischief. I think is the is a good word for it. So there's a lot of like it doesn't seem like anybody feels like they're in danger. A couple of people we spoke to kind of made it sound like they think of the ghost as almost like a coworker, like that's just kind of up to stuff. So um, a lot of the behavior they described was things like uh, the lid off of a tray of hamburger buns got kind of like moved and knocked over. One server said, oh, you know, she rolled up a bunch of silverware and she remembers exactly how she kind of arranged it on a table in the back there. And then when she came back the next morning, it was all different. And she's like, well, who would do that? A, who would do that? And B, like literally who would do that? Like what kind of person would just randomly rearrange rolled up silverware for no reason? It's not your job. Why would you make your life harder? And also who was in the restaurant to do that was kind of her point there. Other times it's been like, uh, you know, there's been a glass that's dropped, but it's on like, it's secured in a shelf. How is it just going to fall over like that? So one of the stories that came up a few times was they had a, uh, like a train full of tourists up there uh, on the North Shore Scenic Railroad. Basically, you go and take a train from Duluth up to Two Harbors, spend an hour or two or whatever in Two Harbors shopping, going, you know, marveling at it. And then there's uh, like basically like an hour long uh, lunch that you eat up there at Blackwoods. And so while they were kind of swamped with basically a train full of people who were all ordering at the same time, you know, it's kind of like they're, uh, you know, this is what they train for sort of a thing. And uh, they said that they basically had a bunch of dirty dishes sitting on a table because they just had so much stuff to go through. They couldn't, their dish, there was like a backlog for, uh, of dirty dishes that they had sitting on a table and no one was around it. And they said that all the dishes got smashed and flung underneath the table. And this is kind of like the rolled up uh, silverware and stuff where like, why would anyone do that? Is, was at least kind of what their thinking was. If I remember right, one woman even said she saw it happen. And so their thinking is like, well, maybe that's the ghost. And a lot enough stories like that exist where there's that kind of gray area where there's no ready explanation. Why would someone smash an entire table full of dishes? Why would someone fling a glass off? Why would someone mess with the lights? That sort of stuff. And so, yeah, so those are like some of the stories. I know one of the things they said is that there's sometimes some kind of like surprising force behind it. It's not like a gentle nudge off a table, you know, like a cat messing with your whatever. It's more like like whipping it, like whoosh, sort of a thing. And they, they all kind of said that, yeah, it's... It's not violent per se, but it's forceful. When we do construction upstairs and things, she gets a little more active. And she'll, uh, we've seen, we have physically seen like the lids of hamburgers fly off the top of the hamburger bun. Or the hamburger bun lid just goes chucking across the room. Ketchup packets, little things that she can, she can really put some force behind and throw them on and off, lights flickering. Um, people have, you know, felt her presence very much. A young gentleman that I work with, um, he felt him, her poke him the other day. And, um, but you can, you can feel a she'll brush by you sometimes and you can just all of a sudden, you know, it'll, a little chill go down your arm. But she's nice. It's when we start doing work on the building is when she gets a little antsy. Most recent was maybe two, three weeks ago, definitely within the month. I was sitting in the office doing paperwork and I looked down at to my right and the garbage can like doo -doo -doo, like moved, like visibly like where I saw it and I was like, okay, that was weird. I got up and I walked away. I was, you know, let her do her thing. So I had a table sitting up in the front of the dining room. It was busy, middle of summer, we had a train and there was a table that was sitting dirty and I had another table on the other side of them. I was talking to him, we both looked over and all the plates fell underneath the table and just shattered. All of them, there was a lot of, not like, you know, there was a few plates underneath there, they all fell and broke. We kind of looked at each other, he looked at me, we looked at the plates, looked back, and we we're like, do we see that? And we were like, yeah. He goes, do you have a ghost? And I said, actually, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it was a very strange, it was just kind of one of those, wait, did we actually see that thing? Like, if I wouldn't have been with somebody else, I would have been like, oh, okay, I may, you know, but it was just, 
There was people there. Every, the whole table saw it. She's made her little appearance out more than a few, a lot, over the eight years. It really, she, she makes herself known. She'll go ghost for a while and she won't. She, there'll be, you know, six months and we won't see anything and then it'll be like boom, boom, boom. She'll come out all the time. That last sound bite was from uh, another worker at the restaurant, uh, Hannah Story, who also has a, a great last name, especially for telling uh, ghost stories in this regard. Agreed. And she's been at the restaurant for around eight years, I believe. Yeah, eight and a half. Close enough. Yeah, Cheryl's the one, the one who said she hadn't, she's been there the longest and said she's like, I didn't really see me. <laughs> yeah, I was talking about that, I was talking about uh, uh, when we talked with her, because she had a whole different experience of like, obviously we sure. talked to uh, Nicole and then Hannah, who we'll, see, we'll hear a little bit more from Hannah a little bit mm -hmm. here. Uh, but we also talked to one other one who's been there the longest, it sounds like, but yeah. has no, none, none of her own stories to tell. Right, yeah. So uh, Cheryl Watson, she's been a server uh, for about 21 years there. And she basically uh, said, yeah, she had, you know, she's heard all the stories and stuff like that, but she herself really has no, I feel a little silly phrasing like this, has no personal experience with the ghost. Um, and, you know, just kind of said, yeah, I haven't really seen anything, but she kind of believes her coworkers or, you know, at least benefits, uh, benefit of the doubts her coworkers there. So we we got to talk directly with some of the workers there that have had their own experiences mm -hmm. and have heard stories from their coworkers and such. Yes. But they've also, there's been some experiences that customers have said they've had as well. Mm -hmm. Not to us directly, so at this point we're talking hearsay a little mm -hmm. bit. We're talking what the workers have heard from customers having mm -hmm. experienced. And uh, uh, there was one story that uh, both uh, Nicole and Hannah had shared about one mm -hmm. experience that uh, a family uh, had experienced. So there was someone here, was a friend, she came in with her mom, her little brother, dad, and then two other folks. Came in for dinner. They were sitting actually right behind us where we are now. And she was acting all weird all dinner. And mom was like, okay, like, what's going on? Quit acting like that. And she, you know, whatever. Dinner goes on. They go home. She finally, you know, what, what was going on? Why were you acting like this? And she said, I saw a little girl under the table crouched down in a yellow dress. And I didn't want to scare my little brother. She said she was so scared. And in the interest of trying to approach this like a, I guess a normal story, uh, I did uh, try and get a hold of the uh, little girl who said they saw Sarah. She's 20 something now. Um, and I basically wasn't able to. She works at a different restaurant in Two Harbors. And just, we weren't able to connect there. But um, either way, it would have been interesting to talk to her, but, you know, such is life. Mm -hmm. Going back a little bit. So let's talk about the origin of Sarah. So you touched on the sure. story a little bit about how mm -hmm. uh, uh, there was a supposed orphanage in mm -hmm. the building and sure. she had maybe fallen down some stairs and broken her neck. Uh, just to give a quick sum summation, uh, this was uh, uh, Hannah's telling of the mm -hmm. general story. Sure. So the story of Sarah that I know is that this place used to be an orphanage or something where there was kids and this used to be a fully functioning whatever, everyone was upstairs. Little Sarah was walking down the back stairs and fell. She broke her neck and then she's been here ever since. So that seems to be the general consensus. Even various things you can find online kind of seem to hint that there mm -hmm. was, it was formerly an orphanage and the little girl falling on the stairs. But to actually, like, you know, take a news reporter approach to this, you call up the actual historians. You called up uh, a Lake County history expert. Uh, a listener of the podcast may remember Ellen Lynch, uh, who we spoke with back in episode six of the podcast about the, the history of 3M. So talk to me about what was that like and what did, what did you learn from sure. Ellen, the actual historian here? Yeah, so... Um yeah, so I'm a little worried about saying things like the consensus about the ghost was, because, you know, it's not like it's epidemiology. But anyhow. Right, um, right, right. <laughs> um, so in any event, yeah, the, the, the rumor is generally that it used to be an orphanage there. Little girl was an orphan, I guess, fell down. There's some pretty steep steps going up to the second floor of the mm -hmm. building. Little girl fell down, broke her neck, died, now haunts the building. That's the, the, how the story goes. That's the rumor, whatever, you, however you want to characterize mm -hmm. it there. So what, as far as we can tell, I uh, called, uh, yeah, Ellen at the Historical Society. She's the executive director of the Lake County Historical Society. And uh, Ellen did some poking around kind of on our behalf here and said that it, uh, as far as she can tell, and you know, she would know, uh, it's her job to know this sort of thing, it was never an orphanage. She said it was a boarding house, which makes sense given the layout of the second floor. There's a lot of like dormitory style sort of rooms up there and uh, a bakery and that sort of thing. And it's been a restaurant for a very long time uh, for the last like 50 years or so, it seems like, according to Lake County property records, which was, that was the other thing I tried to do journalism about was I called the Lake County uh like I called the county and they sent me a list of everybody who's ever owned that property since 1900. 
and it's like a mining company and then it goes to a family and then it looks like maybe they got foreclosed on because briefly the sheriff's department owns it that sort of thing um and it's basically been a restaurant since the late 70s at least and then before that presumably you know that's when it was a boarding house or maybe it was both there's actually a decent number of boarding houses or former ones i guess in the two harbors area in that specific like part of town because it's you know it's a mining town so did ellen lynch have any like insight as to maybe where the rumor of it being an orphanage came from i think it's just a story that just kind of came about from like oh they think that's a little girl and that just kind of fed into this idea like oh it must be an orphanage or no i mean no, ellen was pretty much just like yeah you know it was a bakery boarding house not an orphanage sorry and i'm like oh yeah that's fair enough like <laughs> straight, you're a busy woman straight I'm not, to the point yeah yeah well i mean she was much more polite than that made it right, made right. her sound like but you know she i was like oh fair enough you're a busy woman i'm not gonna bother you about this anymore but uh i think boarding house is close enough it's adjacent enough conceptually mm-hmm. to orphanage that i can kind of see where that comes from and like if you go up to that second floor the owner was kind of uh skittish about letting us take photos of the second floor there Mm -hmm. but the second floor it's clearly used to be like dormitory looking stuff you know like Mm -hmm. like, it looks like kind of like a particularly poorly kept college dorm not because the restaurant is like negligent but just because they use it for storage right yeah it's not part of the restaurant yeah you wouldn't want to live there or anything and so i can see how if you go up there you go oh wow if there's a ghost here maybe this was an orphanage and if it was an orphanage well maybe you know maybe the orphan died because the steps are steep and i mean this is kind of that same sort of i guess gray area where like it used to be a boarding house. There's clear evidence that it used to be a boarding house. And so, you know, one server tells another server, tells a cook, tells another server. Over the course of 20, 30 years, or however long these rumors have been around, they've been around for quite some time, I think it's pretty easy to see how you could get from former boarding house where some weird stuff happens sometimes to haunted by a little girl who died when it was an orphanage. Like, it's not... I mean, I don't want to say it's not a big leap of logic, but it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's not a big leap conceptually, I guess I should say, from the actual recorded history of the building to kind of the reputational history of the building, mm-hmm. so to speak. Yeah, and I think that kind of feeds into the the core essence of what we're talking about here is that it's like the story yeah. surrounding this supposed possible maybe not uh haunting of this restaurant and you can kind of and it's like interesting to see like that there is like a possible progression from what is the literal origin of the building or history mm-hmm. of the building to what maybe could be now what is over many years now turned into what the story is mm-hmm. nowadays. But still kind of, it doesn't come from fabrically nowhere. I, I, I would be surprised if it was just, in fact, some just made up. And right, just, right. Out of nowhere. Yeah, I don't think there was like some charlatan walking through two harbors like, and this restaurant was haunted and they just made it up out of nowhere. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's one of the things that's kind of interesting about a lot of ghost stories and conspiracy theories too is they, they come from somewhere mm-hmm. even if they're not, like objectively true like right. those beliefs are organic so to speak mm-hmm. and uh regardless of the actual origin like the stories still exist and sure. the employees and the customers have had their own stories of mm-hmm. the experiences they've either personally had or heard that someone had uh and we talked a little bit about that that you have a video of one alleged incident mm-hmm. uh can you talk me a little bit more about that that video they showed us sure so that video, uh, it's kind of it, there's a bit of a TMZ quality to it, mm-hmm. where it the video that we saw that maybe they'll send us still, you know, we, uh, I just asked for that. But the video that we saw is a like cell phone video of like a surveillance camera feed, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And what the, the basically, so it's a video of a video, if that makes sense. And the uh, what the what it shows is it's like surveillance camera footage of the bar there. Basically, there's kind of a menu right on the edge of the frame. And, you know, it's business as usual for the first couple seconds of the video. And then that menu on the edge of the frame gets just yanked out of frame, like really fast. Mm-hmm. And then a second or two later, you kind of see someone kind of go, oh, and they put it back. That's pretty much it. To hear Hannah and Nicole say it, no one was there. You know, it just got flung, right? Um, I can't remember if either of them said they saw that happen themselves. But either way, like, you know, they say, well, no one touched it. How did it get flung, right? Well, that's... You know, that's further further evidence of Sarah, of mm-hmm. the ghost. Yeah, and I think it was Hannah that talked about how, when I asked the question about like, how do you address skeptics and such, that like, you, they tell some of these stories or, or these incidents and they just, they're still like, you know, as you talk about that academic side that tries to like rationalize things, but you can't necessarily like, you, well, you can rationalize it's probably not a ghost, but like you still can't necessarily directly debunk what right that specific incident happened yeah i mean i think they said something like you know it's not like there's a draft in here that's knocking all of our things over it'd have to be a supremely drafty building to explain why these sorts of things happen at least in their estimation and it's not so what else is it and as far as they're concerned it's the ghost of a little girl i mean i remain skeptical but also like i mean 
I genuinely do not have an explanation for the stories they tell, but also I wasn't there. It's mm-hmm. you know it's a whole thing. Right. I think there's plenty of perfectly reasonable explanations for why a menu would get yanked out of frame on a video. Uh, you know, someone just goes up to grab it, and you just don't see their hand because it is kind of a grainy video. Like that mm-hmm. makes total sense, but there's not like obvious evidence. You don't see someone's hand. Right? Yeah, you don't have hard evidence to say that is what happened. So it's yeah. kind of like that weird mystery. You can rationalize it, but yeah. you can't prove it's, that it's not. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, like I was saying before. It's that kind of gray area where the sort of story, the sort of rumor, however you want to describe it, can exist happily. You know, once you tell those stories and it's like, okay, you can't even like debunk what happens because there's no other way that we don't have a breeze going through to knock down plates. We don't have, you know, a dog running around the building to to knock stuff over. It's like, okay, she's, it's got to be somebody doing it and it's Sarah. So we've kind of touched on this here and there, but what do you think it's like for the workers working in a restaurant that is allegedly haunted, both for the workers that maybe been there for a while that do kind of like have their own stories and kind of believe it a little bit or for and for those that are just like, OK, whatever. Well, so uh, we ended up speaking to five people who worked there, a couple of them very briefly. Only two of them said, OK, I have direct experience with this ghost there. And that's that's Hannah and Nicole. And they both kind of made it sound like Sarah, the ghost, is they're just used to it at this point like uh i can't remember which one of them said it but you know sometimes a glass will get knocked down and no one's over there and they'll go like oh thanks sarah (laughs) sort of a thing like that it's not like they're being terrorized at least as far as they've you know at least the way they described to us it's definitely an not eerie but eerie feeling especially you know the lights are all off you're here at night by yourself it's like oh you know she's there you know she's probably just watching seeing what you're doing it's definitely normal now i've been here for so long that she's just like oh she's my other co-worker that's here she makes noise and throws plates at everybody but it's nothing to be scared of i've never been scared of her she's fun to have around she's always definitely a little excitement for the day definitely a story to tell because everyone asks about her all the time and then i i wasn't with you and you talked to the other Mm -hmm. two workers who didn't sound like the point you told me they didn't sound too interested in in talking about it anymore yeah um so i spoke to a couple of uh like younger workers there like Mm -hmm. college age right around there and they both said basically the same thing that cheryl who'd worked there for 20 years said which is yeah they've heard the stories but they'd only one of them i think had been there for about a year the other for less than that and they said something along the lines of basically what cheryl said which is you know we've heard the stories we haven't seen anything out of the ordinary and so like maybe maybe it's just a couple people but they are certainly uh you know maybe it's just a couple people who are kind of like true believers so to speak but at least to hear uh, Nicole and Hannah say it, well, they're just kind of remembering things that they've heard from other employees. And there's, they made it sound like, and uh, so did uh, the owner, uh, Thorson. She made it sound like there's plenty of other employees who have similar like ghost stories like that. It's not just two people producing a rumor mill. Mm-hmm. This has been a really interesting story. It's very unusual Northlandia and just story in general. Mm-hmm. But I mean... This might seem odd, but why do you think that this is worth telling in Northlandia? Like for me, I I, I touched this before. It's just because neither of us are saying that this this is definitely haunted. We're not reporting that this place is haunted, but we can never truly know whether the story, stories are true or not. Regardless, the stories exist, and so what's fascinating about this is just one that the stories exist and kind of how they came about, where they come from, and it's just interesting how th- the stories kind of progress from what was maybe at one point true and then divulge into what they eventually become yeah 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 he hit, he hit the nail on the head mm-hmm. so much so that even like what maybe is very well just a seemingly normal piece of audio that does mm-hmm. make a weird noise that maybe they just made or whatever but because of the stories maybe i'm thinking too much of it now yeah i mean that's the one of the things i think i even said when we were doing these interviews last week is like i think to see a lot of these things to believe in ghosts that sort of thing i think you already have to be kind of primed for primed to see them you know the pump needs to be primed right Mm -hmm. like i think if we if if i just walked into that restaurant and someone said hey you want to check out upstairs it's kind of weird looking Mm -hmm. and i walked up and the lights flickered i wouldn't think anything of it because lights flicker sometimes i mean we are in a room right now where the lights flicker sometimes (laughs) because they're just fluorescent lights and that's what fluorescent lights do sometimes Mm -hmm. but we had spent the last hour literally listening to people go yeah there's a ghost here she's a creepy little girl she messes with people you know like we've learned to live with it but she's here and it's like a little eerie and so when you spend all that time hearing and then the lights flicker that's that animal part of your brain sort of thing and then you spend an hour doing that and then there's some of these weird sounds on your recording i mean it's just that there's literally a scene like that in the sixth sense right and i think it's 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 hard to shut off that part of your brain even if it's 
not the part of your brain you use like while you're driving <laughs> and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the, it speaks to the power of stories in general, and they kind of can make you wonder sometimes. I guess, yeah. And that's what Northlandia is all about, possibilities. <laughs> Looking into the curiosities. Yes, that's it. Well, Joe, I think we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, uh, thanks again so much for, for bringing this to us. I'm, I'm curious to see where we're going to go from from here, like what's going to follow uh, this one. Yeah, I'm not really sure what a follow would be on definitive proof of the afterlife. <laughs> And thank you for joining us in this venture into Northlandia. To read the article for this week's column, as well as see photos and video produced by myself, visit DuluthNewsTribune.com slash topics slash Northlandia. You can find all the episodes of Northlandia on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you or someone you know has a unique story that you believe can have a place here in Northlandia, let us know by emailing Northlandia at DuluthNews.com. Join us again next week and discover the extraordinary stories that you just might miss if you're not in the right place at the right time. Race tip off the beaten path with no rush to return here in Northlandia. Thank you.